Starting in March, families receiving SNAP benefits will no longer receive that extra payment each month. Newswatch 16's Chris Keating stopped by a local food bank to see how the organization is preparing to help thousands of people in need. Starting in March, families in need will no longer receive the SNAP emergency allotments that are distributed in the second half of the month. The additional assistance began in 2020 due to the pandemic. According to the Pennsylvania Department of Human Services, more than 1 million SNAP recipients will lose about $181 per month on average. This means families will seek the help of organizations like the Central Pennsylvania Food Bank. In the last few months, maybe the last six months, we've watched the lines growing longer. Uh, the number of people needing help is, is getting greater. Uh, and we know that with SNAP uh, going away, that it's probably going to really increase a significant amount for, for people in need. More than 60,000 people in Columbia, Lycoming, Montour, Northumberland, Snyder, and Tioga counties receive SNAP benefits in December. The Central PA Food Bank has been preparing for an increase in demand for help. We have known this was going to come, so as a food bank, we've been stockpiling and placing things on order, um, doing what we can to make sure we have enough food to meet demand. With rising food prices and inflation, the food bank is asking for donations to support the increase in demand. Financial gifts right now are the most effective way that you can make a difference for your neighbors in need. Um, we are going to be participating in the Raise the Region event um, next week, which I know is um, a high profile kind of fundraiser for a lot of nonprofits. There's a book of Exodus chapter 9, verse 14. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart and upon thy servants and upon thy people that thou mayest know that there is none like me in all the earth. Exodus chapter 9 and verse 14. Shalom. I want to start by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kudash. Double honors to our venerable apostles and elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And peace and blessings to the Lord's elect, the house of David. All right, so brother Aaron coming back at you with another lesson. Lord willing to be edifying and uplifting unto the elect. All right, and I just want to go into this real quick uh, article here. All right, and the title goes, Hunger Cliff Looms as States Are Set to Cut Food Stamp Benefits. Okay, and for some reason, I remember I did a video on this about a couple of weeks ago, really. Okay, um, you know, uh, going into this exact same headline. Okay, and now we're uh, entering into the month of March, and they said that millions of people will be affected by this. Okay, so it says food banks brace for an for an end for an end to demic era SNAP benefits po uh, boost. Okay, that's what they're saying. Okay, it's about to be expired this week. That means that a lot of um, these places that people, you know, predominantly Jake would normally go to. All right, for food, because it happened, a lot of people you see, they don't, they can't, you know, afford to work or their businesses are shut down and so on and so forth. So some way, somehow they have to rely on the, on the state. Okay. So, you know, that being cut off, you can, you can only imagine what that's going to do. Okay. And then you also have this, uh, the fires that's going on. Okay. That's, that's all this chemical stuff. And really, like I said in my past video, all right, these are terrorist attacks. These are terrorist attacks that's happening. The government is terrorizing all right, the, the, the inhabitants of this land. They don't even know, right? All these freaking fires, uh, fire plants being put on fire. I mean, uh, food plants being sh put on fire and all that. Those are so-called terrorist attacks, man. Okay? It's causing terror and it's an attack. Okay? Anyway, it says a hunger cliff is looming for millions of Americans with 32 states set to slash food stamp benefits beginning on Wednesday. Okay, 32, that number 32. All right, three times two, you already know. It says, um, the cuts will impact more than 30 million people who are enrolled on the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program or SNAP. All right, they're about to snap your whole shit up. <laughs> you saw about to take all your happiness away. All right. In those states, and guess what is happening in Mar uh, in the month of March? Okay, let the wars begin. All right, it says in those states, according to data from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, among the states where uh, where recipients are facing cuts are California and Texas, which have uh, which have greatest greatest number of people on SNAP at 5.1 million and 3.6 million respectively. 
Yeah. It says the reductions set to begin in March are due to the end of so-called emergency allotments, which bolstered food stamp benefits at the start of the demic as Americans grappled with the massive disruption to the economy. So, you know, in, 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 in the, uh, in the days that we're heading into, all right, looking at all the signs, all the, uh, the pointers, okay, even from so-called economists and people who really study, all right, the banks and the money and so on and so forth, all right, they're all saying that brace yourself for some type of economic uh, uh, impact, e economic meltdown, all right, economic uh, 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 de uh, uh, destruction, if you will, okay? You got uh, something known as bail-ins, okay, and bailouts, okay? Now, basically, bail-ins, all right, uh, um, in, 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 in layman's terms, is basically when the banks take your money to pay out their, their, um, their, their uh, to basically take the money from you. <laughs> they got to pay out all these uh, loans, all right? You have bank runs that happens. So if you have money in the bank, you might want to start taking them shits out little by little because once this shit goes down, when you have bank runs, all right, these banks are not going to have your money, okay? They're not going to have your money. I know there are uh, several branches now that, you know, you, you go to and if you want to take out a certain amount of money, you got to file a whole uh, paperwork, you know? They need to know your name, your ID, who are you, and what you're doing with the money, and how much are you taking, and how much do you... They're going to make you run around a whole for your own money. See? So what's the point of keeping your money in the bank? For what? It can sit at your house, you know? <laughs> All right, so continuing, it says... um, It says, while the U.S. is certainly on more stable footing than in 2020, we know that's not, that's not true at all, <laughs> Households are now struggling with high food costs. And that's a fact. Everybody's feeling that shit, right? Groceries were about 11.3% higher in January than a year earlier, making the timing of the snap cuts particularly challenging, experts say. Well, it's particularly interesting, experts should be saying, right? If you understand, you know, how the left hand works, okay, this is all being done in the background, okay? Orchestrated this way, because they've told you, right? They told you two years ago, the uh, World Health Organization, all right, and even the UN were saying that the, the hunger that's coming, oh, we're looking at something that's going to basically uh, hurt people for about 50 years. I said, man, these niggas, <laughs> all right? But that, that's just to show you the magnitude of what's coming. You know, 50 years? Hey, you know, there'll be no flesh that'll be saved, you know? And then now they got all this uh, synthetic meat you know, so it makes sense why all this f food processing uh, plants are being burnt down, man. You know, and that's all part of the plagues that the Heavenly Father said he's going to hit all right, modern day Egypt with. Right. We, when you look at it on the spiritual side, in terms of prophecy, why is it? Why are all these things happening? OK, who's behind all this on the earthly side of it? Who's behind it? And in the heavenly side of it, who's behind it? Right. So let's continue. It says, um. Quote, this hunger cliff is coming in the vast majority of states. The people will, will on average lose about $82 of SNAP benefits a month, said uh, Ellen Vollinger, uh, Vollinger, SNAP director at the Food Research and Action Center, an anti-hunger advocacy group. That is a stunning number. Okay, it says that that means a family of four could see their monthly benefit cut by about $328 a month. And let me tell you, there are a lot of people right now who cannot afford to lose that kind of money. They can't. All right. A lot of people, I, I know people today that their paycheck a week is around that number. Okay. A week, busting their ass for 40 hours a week just to come home with 320 something dollars a, a week, man. What the fuck are you going to do with that? You can't pay your rent with that shit and then take care of your, 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 yourself, your children, if you have. And a lot of these people are all young people. No brains in their heads. Mad kids following them. Fuck. Right? So we know that the times that we're coming in, people are going to be affected so much so that all the prophecies that the scriptures talk about that we kept saying, people didn't believe it because they were in a state of luxury. They were in a state of partying. Life was normal back then. Right? <laughs> Whatever normal means in these days. But life was somewhat okay back then. Right? As, at least to the, to, the, to the people of the world. You know, they, they had their freedoms. Now, everyone is struggling. 
And then you add this on top of that. Some people relying on this shit. You know, they're using their paycheck. Someone, somebody was saying it. She said, yo, I live in my car with my kids. I can't afford rent. You know, I can't afford rent. A lot of, you know, it's a lot of people, a lot of people. You know, you got a lot of these, these young girls, you know, college dropout or they just don't want to go back to school or whatever the hell that happened to them. Right. They leave their home, whatever. Right. And their life is a mess. They're going through breakup after breakup with all these ain't shit niggas and their whole lives are a mess, making bad decisions in life. And now they're stuck living from their house, uh, uh, from their cars, you know, and they do YouTube videos <laughs> to show you what kind of life they're living. You know what I'm saying? That's a sad reality, right? That's a sad reality. You go to other countries, you got young people at that age, they got, they, 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 they in the fucking hospital. You know what they doing? You got dentists, you know, you got young lawyers, actual people that, that know something that could help you in life. Not these bum ass people over here, right? So even the quality of life has been degraded so much even the past two, three years, right? It says the worst hit could be, uh, could be elderly Americans who receive the minimum monthly benefit, Volunteer said. They could see their SNAP payments tumble from $281 to a little to as little as $23 per month. Damn. What the fuck? <laughs> That's that you you own nothing and you'll be happy type shit. You know? <laughs> hey, but you know what? It's beautiful because it, it paves the way perfectly for the UBI. You know, you got 32 million people, all right? 32 million people affected by this shit by March 1st. You open up a doorway for to start see hipping 32 million people right off the bat, right? All you people need help. You know, the banks are here to help you. You know, we can get you the food and everything you need. I mean, you used to be on SNAP. So if you want to continue these SNAP benefits, you have to do the transition that's, that's going on. That's 32 million people right there that they're going to get, you know? Or some some number where around where where about because we know it's not all thirty two million that's gonna take it so you know or well, could be the law could do where it's all they they all gonna take it you know <laughs> it is what it is right because that number does amount to six so hmm. anyway so let's keep going it says uh meanwhile eighteen states had already ended their emergency allotments early with some citing the strengthened economy as the reason it states that Georgia that have cut nutritional aid. However, uh, food banks have seen a surge in demand as a result, according to Pew State, uh, State Line. Quote, like many food banks across the country, we are experiencing that li that lines are getting longer. Ah, Kyle Wade, the president of the CEO of president and CEO of the Atlanta Community Food Bank, told CBS News, we've seen a 40 percent increase to our network over the last 15 months. You hear that? You hear that? 15 months, bro, that's what, a, a, what, a year and what, three months, okay, <sighs> man, that's crazy, that is crazy, 40%, <laughs> wow, and, and that number is definitely going to grow, all right, once this shit goes down, because again, you got to think of all the possibilities and all the domino effect type shit that could happen with just one thing. Everything is just so interconnected and interwoven. Everything depends on something. So you knock one down, it's just a matter of time before you knock everything down. You know, when you knock down a domino, the first domino will take time. Bang. Then it'll hit bang. Then it'll hit bang. Bang. But then it starts rolling like that. So that's the same thing. You're, going, you're seeing it. It's building up step by step. And then once the Lord says, okay, the elector sealed. Let the place, let the plays begin. Then, then people going to see some shit. Yeah, yeah. Then people going to see some shit. See, then, then the Lord is going to get his glory. Okay, let's get that. Let's get that. We just read that. We're going to bring it back. All right, Exodus chapter nine. All right, in verse uh, 14, it says, for I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart, meaning your mind. Okay, <laughs> a lot of this stuff that's going on is stressing people out mentally. A lot of people are committing suicide because they can't stomach the, the depression that's coming. You know, all these so-called billionaires and business owners offing themselves all of a sudden, they see the transition and they know, damn, this is going to be tough. They would much rather just end it, you know, and upon thy servants, all right, and upon thy people, that thou mayest know that there is none like me 
in all the earth. So while all these things are happening, it's going to be on, 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 on biblical proportions. That's the only answer people are going to have. Like this would make this will only make sense if it, it came from the Bible, you know, because other than that, how and why, <laughs> you know, how and why? That's how bad things are going to get. You know, verse 15, it says, for now, I will stretch out my hand. And that's not a good thing. <laughs> when the Lord stretches out his hand, somebody getting rocked. <laughs> you know, it says that I may smite thee and thy people with pestilence and thou shalt be cut off from the earth. OK, why is it that it's only in America that you start to see all these train derailments? That ends up when, with fire of, of, of chemicals being burnt. That's affecting people. That's going to cause problems. How come it's not happening in all these other countries? Why is it specifically here in America? It's a thing. It's a thing. It's almost like every month got, got its new vibration to it. So let's see what March has. It looks like March is going to be more around hunger. <laughs> let's see. Okay. And that opens up the way perfectly for the MOTB to be presented through the form of UBI. It's interesting. It goes so many different ways, but we are paying attention, close, close attention. Okay. Verse 16. And in every deed, and it says like, it says, it's like, it says, and in very deed for this cause, have I raised thee up to shew in thee my power and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. That's the of the Lord. That's Yahweh. Okay. <laughs> and the world is about to see. Everything that we've been saying, you're going to witness it. Okay. This is just warm ups, warm ups, you know, warm ups. So stay tuned. Continue. It says the remaining 32 states, going back to the article, that had continued the additional aid are losing that extra money in March due to a provision in the 2023 omnibus spending bill signed into law in December that directs the emergency allotment or allotments to end next month. And if I'm not mistaken, in that bill, all right, which was signed into law, pretty much opened up the way for the government to, you know what, the people. Mm. More than 40 million on food stamps. It says, despite um, the rebounding economy, many Americans continue to struggle with food insecurity, experts say. Food stamp enrollment remains high. With 42 million people receiving the benefit in November 2022, the most recent data available, or about 6% higher than in 2020, according to USDA data. It may seem like an oddity that SNAP, en snap enrollment, wow, SNAP enrollment has increased given that the nation's unemployment rate is at its lowest since 1969. <laughs> Fuck out of here. See, that's what th they always lie and people buy it. You know, no wonder they have conversations and be like, man, give it to them anyway. They're dumb as fuck. They're still not going to know what's, what's the difference is anyway. Right. They'll buy anything. Just give it to them. <laughs> it says, but many workers still can't find full time work or line up enough hours to pay the bills. I was just saying that. Right. Bollinger noted. So they know they know they know they know that their plan is working. It says most working age people who receive food stamps are employed. Research has it says, uh, what sometimes gets messed, uh, missed in that conversation is that part, is that part, is that part that so many conversations, the part that so many SNAP households are employed, but often employed at low wage levels that aren't in jobs. They aren't in jobs that are family sustaining. So they still qualify for SNAP. She added, man, this, this article got me fucked up. All right, let's keep going. It says, I'm um, bracing for it. See, every time. This is the second time I've, I've, I've gone into an article where the last paragraph or the ending, um, the closing statement or the closing paragraph is about, you know, basically bracing for it. There's nothing you could do. Just, just be ready, you know, be ready. All right, it says, because the food stamp cuts were signed into law only in December, neither states nor individuals had much time to prepare, critics say. But do you think they're going to do anything about it? No. It was designed that way so you don't prepare. It says one food stamp recipient in Colorado tweeted that she was sent tips from the state on how to cope, <laughs> such as by stocking up on non-perishable food while she still has a higher benefit amount. You hear that? 
Have we not been telling you this? But guess what? When the time comes, the Lord is going to send these, these Edomites to send their robot dogs and all their robot shit to come into people's houses, knock on their doors, grab them out of their houses, roll up them sleeves, and you either take it or we take you away along with your food. That's the reality people are going to face. Then you're going to hear people crying. You're going to hear people begging. I'm so sorry. Oh God, Jesus Christ. And it's going to be too late. <laughs> That's the reality. Are you ready? Mm. It says, we're reducing your food stamps and we know you will have a hard time surviving. <laughs> hey, call lawyer Basham Yahushai. This is beautiful. We are reduced. This is a quote. Let me read that slow. <laughs> we are reducing. Listen to the verbiage here. We, if you're wondering why and how, we are reducing your food stamps. And we know you will have a hard time surviving. So here are some tips. <laughs> Don't say we didn't ever do nothing for you. That's literally a quote. You know? So we here. We at the point where it's like, all right, at this point, mm, you know, all this bullshit woke, woke culture has allowed people to just be demons straight up and get away with it. You know? It says, meanwhile, food banks say they are expecting an increase in demand as food aid is slashed. So there's no more food aid. There's less food in the pantries. All right. Suddenly shall the storehouses be found empty. Okay. And now people are going to have the demand. So, so you see the game there. Supply is low. Demand is high. What happens then? Whoever has that supply can make a boatload of money. But in this case, they can have a ton of control. That is what this is about. Okay. You starve the people out. They'll do anything. This is what Henry Kissinger was saying, that that so-called New World Order will come to fruition once you get the people to the point where they need food. You're controlling the food that they need. At that point, whatever you say goes. See? It says, people are having to choose between putting food on the table and paying rent. Erin Pulling, CEO of Food Bank of the, of the Rockies, told CBS Colorado, we are seeing more people than ever needing help with food assistance. You hear that? And that number is about to get higher in a few more days. Okay? So get ready for some shit. Because when people are hungry, they get very hangry. You know? And then what happens is, now that your food is gone, get ready. The bank's about to start fucking with your money that you have. The little that you have. And now, the fun begins. It says, of the food stamp cuts, pulling said, we're bracing for it. You know? They're bracing for it. So hey, it'll be it'll behoove you to start bracing too. Okay? To start bracing too. Alright. Now, going back to the plagues, all right. Again, this is all the plagues that the Lord said he's going to put upon this place, just like he did with ancient Egypt. Okay? So we're witnessing those plagues right now. Let me get one real quick. Alright, the plagues of darkness. Alright, Exodus chapter 10 and verse 21. It says, Then the Lord Yahweh said to Moses, Stretch out thy hand toward heaven, that they may be there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, darkness which may even be felt. So Moses, Masha, stretched out his hand toward heaven, and there was thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. Okay? And then, you know, the, um, uh, uh, the historian, all right, basically he says, uh, the, uh, the, Pen penultimate plague cast a cloak of darkness over Egypt. This darkness lasted for a number of days. During this time, the Egyptians trembled in fear, as not a glimmer of light could be seen across the land. The Israelites continued on as normal during this time in the land of Goshen, where the light still remained. Okay? So just keep, keep that in mind that, yeah, you know, it's going to be hard times, but the Lord said, during those times is when my chosen will be known, right? It's because we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have something that makes us stand out, right? We're gonna have something that the rest of the world can't have, and will never have. Okay, that's the spirit of the heavenly Father. All right, the title of being known as a child of the Most High directly as the Israel of God. That's the elect. Okay, the special ones that the Lord specifically created for these times. Because that's why the Lord is coming back. <laughs> you see, the glory of the Heavenly Father 
is is attained when the elect are delivered by Yahushai. Okay? I mean, the Lord doesn't need any of that, but guess what? His name is going to be what? Proclaimed throughout the whole entire earth once that deliverance takes place. I mean, people going to see it and say it before, but at that point, it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> Damn. You know, and that's the times we're coming in. You know, that's the times we're coming. It says what? Then uh, it says what? Uh, uh, the strangeness of his salvation. Let's see if I can get that real quick. All right, let me get this real fast and then we're going to get that. Okay. There's a book of Acts chapter 11 and verse 28. It says, and there stood up one of them named Agabus and signified by the spirit that three, that there should be a great dearth or there should be great dearth throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. All right, that was a famine, okay? And that's what's coming to America again. It says, Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea, which also they did and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. And Saul later on became Paul, all right? Now, this <clears throat> right here could happen again. Okay, you have brothers in different states that... You know, in these times, hey, they're going to go through stuff. We're going to go through stuff. But that's why the Lord has a spirit that he said, well, he's going to take care of us. Okay, my, my servant shall eat. All right, so all the troubles, guess what? The Lord will make a way. All right, it doesn't, it's not always going to be, oh, you just sitting there and an angel will come and bring you a basket of food. <laughs> you know, you're going to have situations, real life situations where, you know, you might have somebody who's of the elect who's well off. You know, they might not get financially affected by any of this stuff. You know, as much as we would or as somebody else would. Right. And the Lord put the spirit on them to, you know, have it where they don't get affected so they can help others. You know, so you sitting there. Next thing you know, yo, somebody, hey, hey, the brother or the sister sent you this. Oh, shit. Hey, damn, this came in a good time, man. You know, you meet somebody. Oh, oh I have a bakery here. You know, your brothers can come over here and get some food and shit. Oh, wow. Hey, the water sister, you know, you never know. But the Lord is going to take care of us either way. All right. So don't worry about it. You know, the plays that are coming is specifically for these devils. All right. These wicked ass people. OK, um, let me see if I can get this last precept that I quoted earlier. I was, I was calling earlier. Um, kind of went for me, but it, it might come back. All right. I'm going to come back. You know, so. Oh, got it. Why do you have a shot? Um, let me see if I can get it real quick. All right. All right. Jeremiah chapter four, uh, 16, verse 14, it says, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord Yahweh, that it shall no more be said that the Lord Yahweh liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord Yahweh liveth, that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. All right. The northern hemisphere, America, predominantly, that's where the elect predominantly are. Okay. That's where the Lord is going to come. And, and hover over the earth, all right, and deliver his elect. And he's going to send his angels throughout the four corners of the earth to deliver the rest of the elect who are around the world right now as we speak, okay? That's why when you look at the so-called UFO sightings, when you when you look at the, the most place where you see a lot of UFO sightings, so-called UFO sightings is normally in North America, specifically America. That shit is always lit up, all right? And the Lord going to light this place up. It says, and from all the lands, there you go, whether he had driven them, and I will bring them again onto their land, which is Israel, that I that I gave unto their fathers. Okay, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right. So that's the times that we're in. Okay. Let me get this last precept here. The strangeness of his salvation. There you go. All right. It's a book of uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5 and verse 1. It says, Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of of such that have afflicted him. And that's what we're doing now. Okay. Esau has afflicted us. The system has afflicted us. Okay. Our people have afflicted us. All right. But the Lord is putting the spirit on us to stand up and be bold. We're doing these videos. We're going out there. And we're bringing out what? The truth. The one thing that you cannot do in this, in this world right now is to bring out the truth. And we do it boldly. Okay. All these different people that try to bring out the truth. What happens? They die. Some way, some way somehow, mysteriously, they just catch heart attacks and then they're gone. How come the men of the Lord continue to proclaim this truth and nobody could do anything to us? Why? It's ordained by the Heavenly Father. Okay? And we're here for a mission. And Esau knows that. Right? It says what? And made no account of his labors. They don't care about the job that we do. 
But guess what? We don't care about you. Why? We're not here for you. We're here for the elect. We have a mission to do. Verse 2. When they say it, or it's like when they see it, they shall be tr uh, troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they looked for. Okay? And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves. This is when the, the troubles come in and, I'm so sorry, oh, Jesus Christ, God, I should have listened. Oh, and, bah! you know, the, uh, the bottom of a barrel of a fucking gun just hits you in the back of your stupid little head. You know, crack all your teeth open. There'll be no mercy. <laughs> all right, scripture says, they shall be like madmen sparing none. So you've been wicked doing all this wicked shit? Well, guess what? It's time to pay. All that tough talk, it's time to talk. Let's do it. Now you got to deal with the Lord. You've been so fucking rebellious. Now you got a deal. War is coming. Fight. You know? You go, I'm telling you, you're going to see people crying. Men crying, screaming. Because you're going to see this robot just shining that light on you. And there's like, oh shit, you know what's coming. Because you just saw it happen to somebody else already. And you were wishing, fuck, that shit, I hope it never happens to me. And that's what, that's what about to happen to you. You know, you might get it worse. You know? It says what? And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, this was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach. All right. All this name calling, ad hominem, ad hominem attacks, all this shit. So at some point you're going to pay. All right. You're going to pay. It says, we fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor. Oh, you're wasting your time. Put that Bible down. Why are you guys always, you still doing this shit? Oh my God, you guys do this every Saturday? Yo, you still doing them videos? You still doing that Israelite shit? Yep. Guess what? You had what? You you, you didn't account, you, you accounted our, our life our life as madness. Okay? You guys ain't got nothing important to do? Oh, go get a job. You dumbass nigga. Who works on Saturdays, nigga? So let's continue. It says, um, how is he numbered among the children of God? And his lot is among the saints. Therefore we have erred from the way of truth. And the light of righteousness hath not shined unto us. And the sun of righteousness rose not upon us. All right. So that, 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 that must, I'm going to leave it off right there. But again, it goes to show you that the Lord said what? At the end, people who are wicked, you're going to suffer. You're going to pay. And then those who are righteous, he's going to what? Provide for, deliver, protect. All right. And we're going to be protected from the troubles that are coming. All right. So, hey, we're in good standing. Lord willing, the most I have mercy on us. All right. So I'm going to leave it off there. Lord willing, you, well, Lord willing, you've been edified. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. Ba'ashem Rechakwadash. Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. Until next time. Shalom.